Hey folks, John from Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. So today, you know, every now and then in IT, and I, I'm pretty sure everybody out there that's uh, worked on old computers runs into some really funky anomaly. Well, this old computer is that funky anomaly. Hang tight, let's take a look at what we got. Be right back. Okay, folks, so uh, what we've got here now, if you watched the past video, we had one uh, that was a massive donation box, and it ended up being almost two full pallets of computers. It was huge, and this one was buried all the way on the bottom of it. Now, like I said in the beginning, every now and then in IT, you guys come across something that's just, you can't explain, just very strange configuration. That's what this one is. So i tell you what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to give a little overview of what I saw in the back. The first thing that really caught my attention, and then we'll move to what really caught my attention on the motherboard itself, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around here so Stumpy can see the back, and I'm going to focus in just on all of the I.O. ports on the back here, okay? So the first thing that we noticed is this is an AT-style keyboard. Now, for those who don't know, that was the big, giant round style that came out before PS2, which was the little bitty round style. But also, uh, you've got a serial port here. You've got an onboard video card built on this motherboard. A little strange, because normally back then you were using ISA video cards, but that's okay. Uh, we've got a standard serial port, well, a parallel port. Now, this one caught me off guard. There are two USB ports on here, as well as two uh, ports, actually four, a PS2 keyboard. So we had AT, USB, and PS2 all on the same card. Very, very strange. Down here, we've got a standard modem. Willing to bet that's probably a 56K. Uh, now, this is another thing that was interesting. There were two audio cards installed on this one. Now, uh, upon further investigation, I found out that one of these is actually the onboard audio, and the other one is, in fact, an add-on ad-lib card. So, uh, the exterior configuration of this was just very strange to me. Um, to have all three of those ports... And I thought to myself, well, all right, we must be dealing with some kind of unique motherboard. Well, let me pop this open and take a look at what we've got in here. It's really weird. Hang tight. So a couple of the things that I noticed in here that were very awkward. Um, and you could probably see this now. we got Stumpy Aim down here so you can see into the, uh, into the board itself. Um, it looks like our, we've got the onboard audio going down to the motherboard. We have an add-on, what looks like a crystal sound card. Uh, it looks like we've got three ISA slots and four PCI slots. Now that wasn't too strange. Um, this is where it starts to get really, really weird. So this add-on card that we saw back here that had the two USBs and the PS2, all right? Um, <laughs> it's actually plugged into the controller on the motherboard as well as the VGA is going down to the motherboard, so the controller for that is also on the board. And once again, it thickens even further, the memory configuration. You've got two DIMM modules, and there's actually one 32 megabyte DIMM in here, and you've got four SIM slots for old me SIM memory. I have never seen both types of memory on the same motherboard. That was completely strange to me. I've never seen them do that before. Um, it does have a Cirix processor on it. Um, it's a, I believe, and I'm going to take a look at this here. It is a Cirix uh, M2-233-66 megahertz. Um, when the Cirix processors came out, they were a little bit deceptive when it came to that. Um, basically, they were competing back in the old days with uh, the early Pentium. So if a Pentium had a Pentium 100, you were getting 100 megahertz. Whereas Cirix would really say... Cirix M2-133, and you'd think, wow, for less money, I'm getting a faster processor, when in fact, you were actually getting a 66 megahertz processor. So it was a little bit deceptive when it came to that. Um, but they, you know, they had their time in the sun. They were decent processors. Um, looks like we've got a standard IDE hard drive. I'm willing to bet that's not very big. We'll look at that. Um, we do have a floppy drive in here, and we've got a, an old CD-ROM drive in here. Um, but like I said, this motherboard layout, this configuration was totally alien. I have never seen this before. Um, I had done some research on it to try to figure out uh, anything I could about this board. Um, I know that it was called a TX Pro 2. 
which would actually support up to a Cirrus 366 if you had the right jumper settings. And as I recall, um, the jumper settings on this motherboard were an absolute nightmare. There were several different banks of them on these. Like I said, I've never seen this configuration, but I remember this particular board. Um, the ones we used to use uh, usually had two ISO slots, two PCI, and two DEM slots. So that's why the rest of this kind of threw me off. Um, you know what? I don't even know if it works. Let's throw it on here and see what it does. What do you guys think? Hang tight. All right, guys. So as you can see, I've almost got it wired up here. Now, um, one issue that I do have, and I, I, I don't even know if this is going to work. Let's assume, and once again, I've not powered this up yet. Let's assume this functions. Um, I don't have an old AT style keyboard floating around here. I used to have at least a couple of adapters to adapt the PS2, but I have over the years just kind of let them fade away and I don't have an adapter. So what I've got is I've got my old Razer keyboard here plugged into those USB 1.0 ports. So I'm curious to see if they'll even acknowledge they exist, assuming it boots up, of course. So, all right, so we got our TV on here. Hang on a sec. Correction, our monitor. Yeah. And we are going in VGA. That's the way they've got plugged in here. Let's plug this thing in, give it power. All right, I plugged it in. It looks like we do have movement on everything. Fans, are, oh, and there we go. Uh, looks like we've got one megabyte of memory, a VGA memory. Uh, we've got 32 megs of RAM. And I'm gonna try to zoom stuff. Oh, and guess what? The That is actually kind of good to know. Um, the USB keyboard is actually working. So hold on one second here. I'm going to turn this so you guys can see me while we're doing it. Not that that's a good thing. <laughs> All right, so going through some of the CMOS settings here. Looks like we've got a 40... We've got a 40 meg hard drive, which is would be about right for the time. Uh, secondary master is a CD-ROM drive. It is seeing the floppy drive. Um... All right, that's looking good. All right, uh, on-chip USB. Uh, that's strange. The on-chip USB is actually disabled, and yet we're still using the on-chip uh, USB. That's, uh, that's actually pretty interesting right there. So I'm going to go ahead and enable it just for the heck of it and enable this for DOS because we are going to have to probably load... Uh, windows on this. Okay, VGA shared memory size. We'll go ahead and set it to 4 megs. Not that that's necessarily a good thing either, but all right. Going through here. All right. Looking good. All right, well, let's see if there's anything on Windows. Hang tight. Let's see if there's anything on this hard drive at all. <laughs> All right, so now it did actually take the memory setting to 4 meg. It sees the hard drive. It is searching, and look at this. It looks like it's going to boot Windows 98. Now, what I will probably do, and I believe I have an old copy of Windows 95 up here. Um, I think, given the unique nature of this computer, um, and the limited resources that we're dealing with, I'm probably going to load Windows 95 on this to give it a little more kick. But let's see if it boots at all. Eh, Windows did not shut down properly last time. That was probably back in 1997. So let's keep going here. All right. Let's see if it boots. All right. So the good news is that it did boot... The bad news is that I don't have a PS2 mouse. I'm going to try to plug in this USB mouse that I've got to our controller here. And let's see if it does anything at all. I'm not holding a great deal of hope, but we shall see. All right, here's what we're going to do, guys. Uh, I'm going to grab a PS2 mouse real quick, and then we're going to shut this thing down. And we're going to reboot it. Well, actually, we may not have to. Let's see what's going to happen here. Don't know who that guy is. <laughs> okay.
Ah, the wonderful windows. All right. So, um, I will probably block that out so you guys can't actually see that. It looks like it did actually belong to somebody. Um, since somebody did own this, there's some privacy issues here. I don't really want a lot of that out there. So what I'm going to do is we're going to break this down to the command prompt, and then we're going to load Windows 98 clean. Now, that will mean we're going to have to locate some device drivers for this ancient motherboard, but that's okay. Okay, guys, back with you. So what I've done is um, I went ahead and I did a clean load of Windows 98 on this machine. As you can see, uh, and it actually loaded up just fine, as a matter of fact. Now, for those of you that don't know a whole lot about Windows 98, um, one thing about this motherboard that was actually an, uh, one of the other interesting things is there's no onboard LAN port, um, and there was no add-on card. Now, that doesn't so much surprise me. Um, back then, you had to put in, and generally, it would have been an ISA card on this one, but an ISA or a PCI uh, network card, which in this particular case would have probably either been a BNC card or it would have been at, at the fastest a 10 megabit per second. Um, I don't have an old ISA card laying around, but I may actually have a PCI. The reason that's important is, if you notice here, it's missing a lot of the drivers. This CMI8330 audio adapter, I believe, is actually the onboard card. And I say that because if you look under the sound video and game, the crystal card is showing up on here, and it does seem to be functioning. Um, you got to love Windows 98, by the way. The, when the preload came up, it came preloaded with AOL. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, you've got mail. You gotta love that one. Um, along with uh, the old Internet Explorer. By the way, this is the setup for the Internet Explorer 3.01. So yeah, let's keep that one in mind. Uh, let's see what we got in here. We've got a just kind of looking around. It looks like the primary hard drive is actually partitioned into two drives, um, which would make sense because that's the way you used to have your first. Your primary hard drive would be two gigabytes which is exactly what we've got right here. And the secondary would be, let's see how big this one is. The secondary is also two. So we are dealing with a massive four gigabyte hard drive in this one. Now, and, and as you can see, Windows 98 doesn't use too terribly much of that. So therefore you didn't need a whole lot more than that back then. So this machine, since it is now up and running and functional, is going to be the one that we're actually gonna play a little game on uh, in an upcoming video. Um, you've, you've heard me uh, talk about the 8-bit guy, one of the guys I watch, some of his shirts I wear occasionally. Um, he actually put out a game fairly recently for DOS called Planet X3. Um, we're going to play that on this machine now that I have this one up and running, and it seems pretty solid. Um, everything else on here looks like it's pretty straightforward. It is a it's nice, clean Windows 98 machine now. And I'm going to disable that onboard audio. That'll get rid of all those. Uh, in fact, let's do that real quick while we're thinking about it. Let's shut this thing down, and we'll restart it by restarting MS-DOS mode. Guys, you got to love this. I mean, I'll show you something that's really kind of cool about that here in a second. So, first thing we're going to do is we'll go into the BIOS, and we'll disable that onboard uh, audio card, because we don't need two of them, obviously. All right. And I did jump the onboard video to 4 meg. The default was 2. No big deal. You know, let's see here. Okay. And we are looking for Onboard Sound Pro. And we are going to disable that. There we go. And hopefully that will take care of it. Now, one thing I want to show you before we go into Windows here. Um, when it boots, you can the old hit F8 to access the advanced menu. Everybody remembers that, right? The cool thing about Windows 95 and Windows 98 is that it would let you drop directly to a DOS prompt. I want to show you this real quick. And you can actually go directly down to a command prompt. And it would take you right to DOS. There you go. And as you can see, it tried to put some uh, CD-ROM device drivers in there and all that. We're going to get rid of those here in just a second. And there's your two partitions. And actually, it looks like right here, guys, uh, it put a Windows 98 directory on here and loaded the Windows 98 directory and the drivers from the secondary partition. Guilty. I did that. Uh, the reason I like to do that is because it loads a whole lot faster coming off this drive than it does coming off that CD-ROM drive. So that's the reason we went ahead and did that. So what we're going to do is let's go back to our C. Let's edit the auto exec. Now, for those who don't know, not bad. 
This is the file that loads up before Windows. Now, back in the old days, you used to have to have this for um, CD-ROM device drivers for, well, for pretty much any device drivers. And you can remark out anything within the autoexec bat. If you put in REM, that means that this will show up as a remark when it's loading, but it doesn't actually load the file. And what we were getting was that error on net error on netstat or netstart rather, and we're getting the error on the CD-ROM drive. So hold tight one second. We're going to rim these out. We'll be right back with you. And now with all of that remarked out, it should boot quite a bit faster for us here. Let's see what we get. Um, the only reason you needed the MSCDX uh, in the config sys and in the auto exec bat is in the old days when you had DOS, it was the only way to get access to your CD-ROM drive. Um, once you had Windows loaded, the device drivers were built into Windows, so you no longer needed them back in DOS, um, which is what we just did. We eliminated those from the config and the auto exec, so let's see what happens here. So once this boots into Windows, we should now have a clean load, but we should still be able to access the uh, CD-ROM drive. Here we go. So here's our windows, and let's go on in here, and we should see our three drives, our two primary and our CD-ROM, and there they are. So two gig, two gig, and the CD-ROM drive. So yeah, we're all configured and all set up now. Cool. Yes, indeed. Well, it does bring back some memories, this old 800 by 600 resolution. You got to love it. Actually, some of my older games that I usually used to run, like Warcraft and Starcraft, the original stuff, uh, would run really well on this. Um, that's actually what they were designed for, was that low resolution. And a system with pretty close to this stats. So, network neighborhood. Yeah, we've all seen that, but nowadays that's kind of concealed down in the... Uh, when you go into the my computer all right guys so what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up so we have a really funky motherboard that functions we have a nice clean load of windows 98 that is going to give us the basis to test a few other things including planet x3 and actually i've got it on floppy and cd but you know what i got a floppy drive on this so i think we're going to load it on floppy the old-fashioned way so keep an eye out for that video it will be coming up shortly i figure you guys might get a kick out of this one just uh to see some crazy old technology. And uh, now that everything's loaded, my keyboard and mouse on the USB are actually functioning. So I was able to remove that PS2 mouse you saw me uh, using a few minutes ago. So, all right, guys. Well, listen, thanks for watching. I know this was a nice quick video, something a little different. Um, but then again, this motherboard was a little different. So this system is actually going to be here. We won't be selling it or getting rid of it. And it's not going to end up on the wall back here because it's functional and it's cool. So if you want to see it, come by someday. We'll plug it in take a look at it. All right, man. Well, have a great week. Uh, we'll, uh, I've got another video planned here shortly that I think you guys are really going to get a kick out of. Um, it's uh, pretty big in scale. So you know me. I'm always coming up with something creative. We'll see you guys shortly, and have a good one. Bye-bye.